Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be covering a weapon pickup in C++. We're going to be doing this through creating an actor that can be picked up by the player, and we'll use this to represent our player wielding a gun. This video is a continuation off of our first person character controller, and there will be three more parts including this one. This one is going to consist of deactivating a gun on the table and activating one in the hand. The next one will be about exporting Unreal assets into FBXs so that way we can put them into Blender and animate them there and then import them back into our game. The final video will be taking those imported animations and having them play whenever we interact with the pickup so that we can create a smooth pickup of the weapon instead of having it just automatically appear in the hand. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Before we begin, you need to make sure that you have the previous video watched so that way you already have your first person character controller done. And then you will also need some kind of weapon that you want to use throughout the tutorial. The weapons that I'll be using are linked in the description below. They are from the Unreal Store and they were free at the time that I downloaded them. So we'll go ahead and add those to the game. For those that don't know how to add them, you open up the Epic Games engine, you go to your library, you scroll down to your vault where you'll have your different asset packs, and then you're just going to click on add to project, find the project that you're currently using, and then click add to project. While that's being added, I'm going to go ahead and go up to edit, project settings, scroll down to our inputs, and I'm going to create a new action mapping. We're going to use this to say when we want to pick up our weapon. So we're going to call it pickup and we're going to just set it to X. You can go ahead and minimize that. And then if we go over to our content folder, we can see that the weapons has already been imported. So we're going to go to weapons, meshes. I'm going to use the SMG and I'm going to use the no stock one and just drop it into the game. And what you want to do is make sure it is a child of your character. If it doesn't allow you to attach it as a child, make sure that the mobility of it is movable first. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and position it however you feel is best for your player. I'm going to do 40, 40, 10. Which then if I click on my camera, you can see that it's in this bottom right corner. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start the coding. So I'm going to create a new C++ class. And this will be an actor. And I'm going to call this my weapon pickup. And I'm going to go ahead and create class. Now that our script has compiled, what we want to do inside the header of our weapon pickup is add another including. And this one is going to be components slash static mesh component dot h. And then from here, we're going to create two public functions. The first one is going to be void interacted. And we're going to use this function to say when an object has been interacted with in the scene, so that way we know when to set it to hidden and when to set its active to false. The next function that we're going to do is going to be a bool, and it's going to be called get active. And we'll use this function whenever we're checking the items that we've interacted with to see if this item is hidden in the scene, so that way we know not to pick this one up again. And then finally, we're going to have two private properties. Our first property is going to be active. And it will be a bool. And this is the one that will be setting true when it's not hidden in the scene and false when it is hidden in the scene. And then our last property is going to be the mesh. And this is a U static mesh component. And I'm simply going to call it mesh. And then inside our U property, we're going to have it be visible anywhere. And we're going to set its category to mesh. And that's all we're going to be doing inside the header. So we can go ahead and go over to our CPP. And the first thing we're going to be doing in here is we're going to add to our constructor. And what we want to add here is just active equals true. 
And the reason we're doing this is because the object in the scene will be active to begin with. So we want to make sure that we have this set to true by default. And then the next thing that we're going to do inside the constructor is create our mesh. So we'll do mesh equals create default sub object. And the type is going to be a static mesh component. And for the text, we'll just give it mesh. And then we want to make sure that our root component is equal to that mesh. And now we can scroll down and create our functions. So our first function was the interacted function. So we're going to do a my weapon pickup interacted. And again, inside this, all we're going to do is set active to equal false. And then we're going to set the actor hidden in scene to be true. And then our final function was the get active. So bool my weapon pickup get active. And this is simply just going to return our active property. And that's all we're doing inside the weapon pickup actor. So now what we want to do is go to our character script that we created in the previous video. We're going to go to the header first and we're going to add some more includings. The first including that we're going to add is going to be for sphere components. So we're going to go ahead and do include components sphere component. We're going to end up using the sphere component as a way to create a radius that our player is able to interact within. The next including is going to be for our skeletal mesh actor. And it's going to be animation and then skeletal mesh actor dot h. And this is going to be for our wielded object that will be in our hand initially. And the reason we're doing skeletal mesh actor instead of a regular actor is so that way in the final video when we're trying to do animations, we don't have to go back and change our wielded type from actor to a skeletal mesh actor it's already set up. And then the final including is going to be our weapon pickup. And the reason we need this is so that way we can call the functions we just created inside that actor. Inside of this class, we're going to create a function and two more properties. So we can go ahead and do void and we're going to call it interact. And this is the function we're going to call whenever our player clicks on our input. And then now we can go ahead and do a u property. And it's going to be edit anywhere. We're going to give it a category of pickup. And we're going to give it a meta of allow private access that will equal true. And this property is going to be our U sphere component. And we're going to call it collection range. And then our final property is going to be our wielded object. This will also be an edit anywhere and a category of pickup. And this will be a skeletal mesh actor. And we're going to name it wielded. And that's all we're doing in our characters header. So we can go ahead and go over to our character CPP and we're going to scroll up to our constructor because we need to create our collection range and give it some defaults. So the first thing we're going to do is collection range, create default sub object. And the type is going to be a U sphere component. And the text. will be collection range. And we want to take our collection range and attach it to our root component. So attach to root component. Need to make sure that I add range here. And then finally, for the collection range, we want to give it a radius. And I'm going to give it a hundred. And the radius is simply how far away your player can interact with the pickups. Now we're going to scroll down to our begin play. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say if our wielded is not null, 
In other words, we remembered to attach it to our player. Then we're going to go ahead and take our wielded. And we're going to take this set hidden in game. And we're going to make this true. And the reason this is true by default is because we want the weapon that is wielded by our player in its hand at the beginning of the game to not be active. We want it to become active after we've interacted with the one that will be on the table. Now we can scroll down to our input and we're going to go ahead and add that action. So input component, bind action, we're going to do the pickup which is what we named it. We want this to happen anytime the player presses. We want it to happen to this object. And then the function we want it to call is the interact function. And now finally we can create that interact function. So we're gonna go ahead and do void a my fp character interact. And then the first thing we're going to do is create an array. And this array is going to be of actors. And we're going to call this in range items. And this array will keep track of all of the actors that were inside our radius whenever we clicked the interact button. And how we're going to do this is by taking our collection range, getting the actors that overlap with that, and then filling all of those actors into our in range items. And then we want to be able to shift through all those items, so we're going to create a for loop. And the first thing we want to do inside this for loop is make sure that the actors that we've collected are actually a weapon pickup. So the way we're going to do that is by saying a my weapon pickup. And we're just going to call this test item. And we're going to attempt to cast it as a weapon pickup. And then we'll take the current in ranged item. And then what we want to do is see if it's successfully casted. So we're going to put test item to see if it's not null. And then if it's not null, we want to check to make sure that the item is not pending a kill. And if it's not pending a kill, then we want to make sure that the test item is currently active. And the reason we want to check the get active is because we don't want to be able to interact with items that are hidden in the scene. And so then if all of this is true, what we want to do is say that our test item has been interacted with, which is the function from our weapon class. And then we want to say if our wielded isn't null, then we want to take our wielded and set the actor hidden in game to false. And what this will do is take the wielded object that we've attached to our character class and it'll make it to where it's now visible in front of our camera. So we can go ahead and save this and go back to the scene as that's all the coding that we'll be doing. And then we can go ahead and compile. And once this is done compiling, we're going to go to our character and attach the wielded object that's a child as the wielded object in our script. And then we'll go ahead and put a pickup onto the table and give it a mesh of the same weapon that we're wielding. So the compile is completed, so we'll go ahead and go to the character. And I'm going to type into the search details wielded so I don't have to go searching for it. I can click on this and then I'm going to attach the thing that is a child of our player. From there, I'm going to go over to content and go to our C++ classes. I'm going to drag a my weapon pickup into the scene. And then on the static mesh, I'm going to make sure that I do the SMG that is the same one as the one my player is wielding. 
and then I'm just going to adjust it so that way it's laying flat on the table. Now we can go ahead and play. And then as you can see, it is not in my hand. And when I walk over and click X, it pops up into my hand. As a recap, we used inputs to provide a way for our player to interact with actors in our scene, which allowed us to create a way for our player to wield a gun. As a reminder, the next video is going to consist of exporting the SMG out of Unreal as an FBX, so that way we can edit it and animate it inside of Blender and then import it back into our game. The video after that is going to be the one where we take those animations and have them play whenever we interact with our weapons, so that way we get a more smooth pickup of the gun instead of just an automatic pop in to the hand. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>